And so you can see what it looks like in paracord. Here it is. This video is from Max. He asked about tying a shoe carrier. For this harness, I used eighth inch shock cord. And this little hook here, I'll show you how to make it in another video. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be using 532nd shock cord for this next one. It's the same diameter as paracord, but this has a stretch to it. Each of my sections are four feet long, and I'll find the center point by matching up the ends and then pulling it back through. Now here, I'm gonna place it onto my hands and tie in a diamond knot. But let me show you how that looks on a larger piece of rope. The rope on your right hand side, I'm gonna turn in an underhand loop, like if I'm turning off a car, and I'm gonna place that right over the top of the left strand. I'll pull a little bit out. Now I'll reach from behind, grab my left strand, and I'll thread that rope through. And if you do this correctly, you'll end up with a symmetrical knot. There we go. Now I'll take this rope here on the right hand side and you see how it follows a curve going counterclockwise. I'll continue that curve and the post behind here, I'm gonna go around the post and up through that center diamond. Same thing on the other side, continue the counterclockwise curve. There's that post, I'll go around the back side of it and up through the center diamond. And now when I pull this all together, I'll end up with this herringbone pattern that goes around the center of the knot. There we go, let's dress it up just a little bit. All right, so here we go now with two strands. Take my right hand side underhand loop and I'll place it over the top of my left strand. Pull this through and create a little window there. Now I'll reach from behind, grab my left strand, and both of them are going to go through that window I just made. And if I did this correctly, I will end up with a symmetrical knot. But if we take a close look, you'll see right here I've overlapped. We don't want that. So we're gonna straighten this out so everything lays flat next to each other. And in the back, we wanna shorten this up as much as we can. So I'll pull this through and I'll start weaving it all the way around until it's sitting exactly how I want it. And this is what we wanna look like. Everything's looking good, nice and flat. Just like before, I'll take my ends, I'll go around the post and up through that diamond and then same thing on the other side. All right, once you're all dressed up, this is what you wanna look like. While you're tying this, it is helpful to get a pair of rubber bands. Place one around the toe, and then another around the heel. And then that way, as you're measuring your harness and pulling it on and off, you're not fighting your shoes so much. And we're gonna tie a knot to hold our toe into place. We're gonna do that same knot on both sides. Now let me show you this example first so you have a good idea of how we're tying each knot. If I take my blue rope and I wrap it clockwise into a full turn, you see I have my left side loop and my right side loop. Left goes left, right goes right, and now I end up with this pretzel formation. I'll take my opposing rope and I'll thread it starting from the back, then through the middle and right back out the other side. Now watch what happens when I pull on the opposing sides of my blue rope. I end up with a four strand knot. This is the same knot that you use to tie friendship bracelets. And we're gonna use it to tie our shoe harness. To help hold our shoes while we do this, I just have a couple parallel clamps. We'll take two of our strands, place it around the toe, and this is where we're gonna tie our knot. We do want it short enough so we can take advantage of that elasticity of the shock cord. While you're facing your diamond knot, flip your cords upward. We'll start with the left hand side. Full turn, left goes left, right goes right. And now I'll take my opposing side and I'm going to weave it in and out. From the back, through the middle, and then out again. Now I'll pull my opposing sides, 
to create that four strand knot. There we go. And now you see it taking shape. I do want this to be even. And when I pull this down, you can see my white cord is much longer. All I'm gonna do is carefully thread it through so that the lengths match up. There we go, now we're looking good. And I'll just keep feeding it through the other side. All right. And now we're looking decent. I'll just keep playing with that until I get it exactly how I want it. My knot is tight. Let's measure it against our shoe. Yep, that looks like it'll do well. We're gonna take the other side, do the same exact thing, and match up the lengths. All right, there we have it. Two knots, equal lengths. Let's compare it to our shoes. One's gonna go here, other on this side. All right, we're looking good. Next, we're gonna take our opposing strands and tie a knot just above center because when we tighten this, we wanna take advantage of that elasticity again. Same thing, we are going to lift our cords upward on the left-hand side, we'll create a coil. Left goes left, right goes right. There it is. And with our opposing side, we are going to thread it in and out. Back to front, front to back, back to front. Now, as I pull the opposing sides, let me zoom that in so you can see, we'll get our four strand knot. There we go. You can see it taking shape there. Now, you can see my left-hand side is much longer, okay? I'll try to keep this all together. You wanna to be careful because if you don't hold your Z in the middle, your Z, if you're a Canadian friend of mine, you're gonna lose the knot. And it's easier for me just to pull it all out and start it all over again. Okay, that's looking good. We're still long on our left-hand side. Pull that, there we go. Now we're looking better. And now we can flip this over. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to match up the same knot on the other side, just right here. All right, next thing we're going to do is tie another knot, this time at the heel of the shoe. Same thing, we're going to do two four strand knots on either heel using opposing strands. All right, we have our toes tied, our centers, and then our heels. Now we'll take our strands from down below we're gonna cross them up here. We're gonna do another four strand knot here and then we'll tie them off at the top. The Marlin spike definitely comes in handy here because this cord likes to jam on itself and it makes it a lot easier to adjust when you can get underneath the strands. I still need to tie the other side, but I'll show you how this will work. Here are the strands coming off my heels. I brought them up. I'll separate them and I'm going to tie in to either side with two barrel knots. And here's that example so you can see what we're doing. If this is a strand I'm working with and this is the piece I'm going to tie it off to, I'll take it and place them together and I'll start wrapping over going downward and I'm just going to do that three times. Okay. The third time I'm going to go through this first loop this loop that's underneath in the middle, and then this outer loop. So let me feed that all through. There we go. And when I pull it tight, it's a knot that will create a lot of friction. And the three turns make it look aesthetic. Round once, and then twice. And then my third time, I'm going to poke back through all the turns that I just did and pull everything tight. There we go. Now as we're placing our shoes in and out of this holster here, you can get lost on where you need to pull this down. And so what I'll do is I'll take a couple pieces of paracord here. This is gutted. And I'll just slip it through my four strand knot and I'll tie it off so I have something to grab on and I have something to help me locate the correct knot to pull on. Okay. 
If you don't want to be so fancy, you can do the quick version, which is just a series of overhand knots. So there's one at the top. Do another one here. Another one here. There we go. Now we'll split these two apart. Using my hand as a gauge, I just did one hands width away. Same thing over here. One hands width away. There we go. And now we can see that our shoes are going to fit in here. These are the top loops. Put these together so you can see how it goes. Okay, now we need to do our heels. Let's put those apart. There we go. Okay, here it looks like it's going to be locked in like that. Okay, and then you don't even really need to go back up if you don't want to be fancy. Now we would just trim this off and you have your same functionality to hold your shoes.